All this week, ABC News is taking a closer look at the rental market. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it seems some of what's on offer is far from fit for purpose. Law graduate Geordie Vandenberg has tens of thousands of followers watching the videos he posts to TikTok. He takes a tongue-in-cheek look at real estate listings, analysing their price, photos and description. But what he often finds is not a joke. Let's take a look. Something I'm not willing to overlook is the fact the landlord considers this a bathroom. I feel like you can't just put a toilet on the floor outside and then call it a bathroom, because that'd kind of be like parking your car out the front of Parliament House and then calling it a garage. The toilet does come with a bidet though, so like bonus points for that, I guess, except it does look previously owned. Geordie Vandenberg, AKA Purple Pingers, joins us now. Geordie, very good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks How did having. you get involved in this? Uh, I was really mad at real estate agents at the end of the day. I think it's a universal experience to have had a bad experience with a real estate agent, no matter who you are in Australia. Mm. So one, one experience or many Lots. that, and friends Plenty. telling you things? Exactly, yeah. Especially as a young renter in Australia, um, I think it's, <laughs> you'll be hard pressed to find someone who hasn't had a bad go with a real estate agent. Before we talk to some of the videos you showcase on TikTok, broadly speaking, what was what were your bad experiences um, as a tenant? Good question. Just real estate agents rocking up with no notice. Um, just like it's just the way that they kind of treat you. They think you're not really human at the end of the day. So that vibe was off. Mm. And and so what was your experience then to be able to put that into a TikTok? account like where, how did that all start happening fair question it was during covid and tiktok had just come out and i wanted to do something a bit relatable so i think that was pretty relatable mm, and it started with it with a trickle as most tiktok accounts do but in your case geordie that trickle turned very quickly into a flood were you taken aback by the sheer flow of uh, uh tenants potential tenants getting in touch with you and, and sending videos like this absolutely yeah i've got just a backlog of places that I need to have a look at. Um, and yeah, the sheer volume from people all over Australia was kind of astonishing. It's really sad. And do you find it astonishing that the type of house, uh, often in disrepair, as we've seen from your videos, that tenants are having to suck up, move into, because there is such a shortage of properties around generally? Yeah, at the, at the moment, what I've noticed is I've been doing this for three years now. The really terrible ones are staying on the market for a lot less time, like less than a week. Usually it was months at a time and now they're just being snapped up because people are desperate. Are you getting in to see each of them? Not you each said, of them, but a do... lot of them I've right. gone and to visit. What, what are some of the, the worst things that you've seen? Oh, I, don't, I don't know where to start. Like just exposed asbestos, like carpet that squelches when you walk through, like literally houses falling over. Like you stand in and then you kind of leaning one way. It's like possums in the extractive fan stuff. It's like plants growing through the carpet, plants growing through windows. It's just horrible. Yeah, no, I've seen there's some shockers out there and you, as I've seen, are quite vivid and quite sweary, yes. which we won't be I'm on trying. Breakfast TV, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Uh, this morning, um, uh, uh, in your descriptions in some of these properties, has that prompted agents, for instance, to get in touch with you to express their views? Absolutely. I've had a few um, try and offer money to take videos down. Um, really? Yeah, yes. That's, yeah. Wow. That's, so not, what, what not spending money to, to fix places. No, they'd rather, instead of doing the work that they're legally required to do, they'd rather me take the video what, down. What do you say to them when they... Uh, I ask them how much, and I've never accepted any money, yeah. but uh, the, the most I've been offered was 200 bucks, so it's obviously not that much of an issue for them. Mm. Wow. Do you... Oh, you started in COVID. You've seen it getting worse, do yep. you think? As we now, we, all week, we're going to be talking about 100%. the rental crisis that yep. Australians face. Absolutely, it's getting worse. And there's not much to help renters at the moment. Mm. Have, if you, yeah. If, uh, if you had the chance to speak to, you know, policymakers, the Prime Minister, Premiers, Chief Ministers, what would you tell them this morning? Oh, I'd have a few things to say. I'd say uh, renters need a long-term solution and renters are struggling immediately as well. So they need something in the immediate to short term. None of the proposed solutions offered by uh, the government, uh, it helps renters who are struggling now. The only proposed solution is from the Greens, which is a rent freeze and a uh, uh, 
like rent controls. Mm. You're not worried that will scare investors away and therefore re result in uh, fewer houses on the market? Um, I don't believe so. We had a million and 44,000 vacant homes on the census night. Um, if we also included something like a residential land tax, a vacant residential land tax to kind of force those markets, properties onto the market, mm. I think that would help in some way. But the proposed solution to build, you know, 1.2 million homes is that's not going to meet the demand. So like increasing supply to a level that doesn't meet demand is not going to fix the issue. It's going to kick the can further down the road and make it worse. Geordie, I'm curious, does anyone come back to you when they realise they've rented one of the places that you've pointed out? Absolutely, yeah. I get a few, few of them most times, actually, yeah. It's like, oh, that's my old place, or that's my mate's old place. How do you find the time to do all this? You've, you've got a day job as well, I yes. believe. Yeah, right. it's very stressful. I, gotta, I really have to figure that out. And why are you doing it? What is driving you? I think, so I've recently purchased a home um, and oh, I'm very... Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm very fortunate to have been able to do that um, and I don't think it's fair that, uh, you know, I don't help people who were in my situation or in a worse situation. I think that's an obligation that we all have to everyone. Mm. And where can people find you again on TikTok? TikTok, Purple Pingers, Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> You're all over the place. Hey, thanks for coming in because, look, they're kind of funny in a bad, sick way, mm. but mm. you're really highlighting something very important and really appreciate having a chat. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Geordie, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Carly, we're asking for your opinions this morning mm. as a renter, as a landlord. Uh, we'll get to some landlord comments, which is important as mm. well. Uh, we have those in the mix too. But uh, Carly says, I've been single all of my life. I'm 52 and have been renting now for 10 years. I had to walk away from my last home with no capital gain as the mortgage payments were just too much on a single wage. I have no ability to live, rent and save for a deposit to get back into the market. And Andrew is a landlord, right? So he's written in and said he finds the current dialogue a bit lopsided. Decided. My mortgage payments on my investment property have more than doubled. Insurance has gone up by 25% this year. The current call for rental increase caps and freezes will only add to the problem, with many landlords, including myself, saying they'll then sell their properties. Mm. Well, I, I was just, if Geordie's still here, you're shaking yeah. your head when Lisa read that, and we've got a few other from landlords, yeah. uh, you know, justifiably saying they're being hit by increased mm. interest rates, they're struggling to put food on the t their table, therefore they have no choice, therefore, to pass on those interest rate increases yeah. through yeah. rent increases through their investment properties. What, what do you say to that argument? I think at the end of the day, you made a speculative investment in something that is a human right, and you lost and no investment is without risk, especially like you shouldn't be able to invest in a human right at the end of the day. Our current system lets you, you lost out in your investment, you pay in what other world when your business loses a risky investment, do you get to pass that on to someone, to the government, unless you're Qantas, I guess. Mm. Yes, we'll take that as comment the last bit. Geordie, <laughs> thank you so much. Cheers. Uh, a new study has 